The tutorials in the Virtual Fighter 4 series of games are considered some of the best, if not the best, fighting game tutorials of all time. It's said that these tutorials don't just make you better at Virtual Fighter 4, or even Virtual Fighter in general, but actually improve your comprehension of fighting games altogether. In this series, I'll be going through the Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution version of these tutorials, in its entirety, one chapter per week, covering what the tutorial is, why it's teaching it to you, how it teaches you, and lastly, how to recreate this tutorial in Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown, Final Showdown, or theoretically in any fighting game of your choice. It's 20 years later, but we're still 10 years too early. Let's see what it is that makes even modern fighting game tutorials pale in comparison to these PlayStation 2 era trials. This is Virtual Fighter Return to Evolution. So to start, let's look at the beginner tutorials. This is a collection of over 60 lessons split across 23 chapters. Note that each lesson comes with a recommended rank. Unlike most tutorials, this isn't a sit through, end to end, set and forget session. The people that made this want you to improve and in order to do this, they want to follow you along your progression. The ranks in Virtual Fighter operate on a karate style Danison system, beginning with Q ranks, which count from 10th Q down to 1st Q, followed by Dan ranks, which count from 1st Dan up to 10th Dan, and then onwards into more brightly coloured ranks. If you're not playing Virtual Fighter, I'll leave it up to your judgement where to place yourself, but bear in mind that most of these are based on players that are beginning to learn at the 1st Dan level and working their way up, so they've probably already button mashed their way through the queues online with a character, probably have a good idea of the character that they want to play, and maybe even have an idea of some of the moves that they like, but perhaps not why they like them. I'd strongly recommend considering the levels of each tutorial, as they aren't linear, going away and trying to apply each of the things you learn one by one, and then coming back to the tutorials. In some versions of Virtual Fighter 4 and 5, this was further propped up by the quest mode, which also followed the ranking system and simulated the experience of fighting against players of different abilities through the ranks by using ghost data from real players, including many notable professionals and champions. Right, let's get started. Number one, using striking attacks. This is broken into two sections. One A, breaking through a defense, and one B, getting a counter. One A, breaking through a defense. Recommended rank up to first down. What it is. This wants you to know that if a striking attack's blocked, it doesn't do damage, but mid attacks can break through low guards, and low attacks can break through high guards. It also wants you to know that when using striking attacks, mixing up mids and lows, will force your opponent to change their defense. Why it's teaching you this? This tutorial wants you to understand a few things. Unlike in other games, block moves in Virtual Fighter do not chip. It also wants you to know what levels certain attacks can be blocked at. There are exceptions, but right now it wants you to think that nothing can be guarded at all levels. It wants you to know what levels they can be blocked at, what they can't be blocked at, the importance of switching your attack levels and forcing your opponent to change their guard levels. It wants you to understand responding to your opponent's guard by changing your attack level. That in Virtual Fighter, guard and attack levels are predominantly influenced by mixing mids and lows. It also wants you to know the potency of mids against low guards and lows against high guards, with mids influencing players to guard high and be vulnerable to lows, while lows influence players to guard low, which opens them up to the mids, where a lot of the scariest moves and mix-ups are. How it teaches you this. The exercise asks you to hit your guard and opponent with striking attacks. The opponent will switch between a high guard and a low guard, and the tutorial asks you to break through their defense by attacking at the right level five times. How to recreate this? In Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown, you can practice this by recording the dummy in one of two ways. Either by recording one long recording of the dummy garden between the high and low, changing randomly, or if you want something a little closer to true random behavior, by recording two shortish recordings, one where the dummy guards high, and one where the dummy guards low, and then setting the playback to random so that the dummy guards at one of the two heights at random for a random duration. Observe that highs are suddenly less desirable than they are against a static dummy, when compared with mids and lows, which always connect regardless of height, just with different outcomes. You'll also hopefully see that changing the levels isn't as straightforward as picking lots of attack levels, just hoping that the opponent makes a mistake in their active defense. Your offense should also be active and respond to their levels to a degree either in real time where it's possible, such as attacking in block strings with different routes, or by observing their tendencies and then adapting your offense as a response in your next opportunity. When thinking about mix-ups from an attack level perspective, also bear in mind that in a lot of 3D fighters, this mid and low mix-up is the norm. In 2D fighters, it's often things like lows and overheads. But as you advance in Virtual Fighter 5, this actually evolves from a mids and lows mix-up into a mix-up between mids and throws at a higher level, where the opponent's ducking under the throw attempt not to defend against the low, but to avoid the throw. Ultimately, it's the same principle, but for different reasons. So have a think about how this might apply and evolve in different games too. 1B, getting a counter. Recommended rank up to first down. What it is. This is teaching you that a counter hit comes from hitting your opponent 
while they're trying to attack you. They want you to know that compared to normal hits, these do more damage and create more advantageous situations so you can get more opportunities from them. And it also lets you know that these don't just work on strikes, they also work on throw attempts and reversals if your active frames with your attack occur before theirs. Why it's teaching you this? Counter hits act as a reward system for an understanding command of the main Virtual Fighter attack system. This tutorial demonstrates a few things in this regard. The fast moves can beat slower moves. The interrupting moves is a valid strategy. It also shows you what counter hits and counter hit opportunities might look like and that there's a reward for identifying and taking a counter hit opportunity. How it teaches you this? The tutorial asks you to interrupt the opponent's attack with a counter attack with the assistance of a countdown. Wolf performs a slow charge move that's easy to react to, which you can beat with a variety of moves at various levels. How to recreate this? Select Wolf or anyone with a chargeable attack as your dummy. There's no countdown function in Virtual Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown, so if you'd like the assistance of a countdown, I'd recommend holding guard and tapping down three times to act as your counter when recording. Then record the charge attack immediately guard and after and see what kind of moves you have that can intercept it. Observe that fast moves can be carried out quite late and in a reactive manner. As you get better, you won't necessarily need to count down and may even get brave enough to respond with slightly slower mid attacks that can really benefit off that counter hit state. Using Virtual Fighter 5, Ultimate Showdown or Final Showdown, if you have your attack data displayed, you'll notice some of the benefits that come from the counter hit state here so it can be rewarding to scout for opportunities to intercept. In a real match scenario, it's less likely that an opponent will just throw out slow attacks like this, although it does happen. It's more likely is that they hide them in block strings or other moments where you're likely to be afraid to try to attack. And that's chapter one. The first thing that this game teaches you is attack levels and attack priority. It's slightly better than the press forward to walk forward type tutorials that fighting games tend to offer. So it's already got you thinking a little more about the systems that make up the fighting game rather than just the buttons. And this puts you inside the game immediately rather than thinking outside of the game and focusing on the interface, what it is you're pressing. This might not be blowing your mind just yet, but stick around for chapter two as it already starts to get into some quite smart stuff that you can look out for.